Hi, my name is Charles Anon. I'm one of the surgeons at South Claws. Today I'm going to talk to you about the coiling of a portosystemic shunt. Uh, here on the sagittal view of the CT scan, we can see the portosystemic shunt extending ventrally from the vena cava within the parenchyma of the liver. On the dorsal ventral view, we can see the portosystemic shunt extending into the right medial liver lobe. Uh, you can also see the vena cava extending caudally. Now we've repositioned this scan so that it's similarly positioned to what it'll look like on fluoroscopy. The patient is positioned in dorsal to come and see on the table and we've placed a marker catheter in the vena cava. Now you can see with dye administration the outline of the vena cava. In this scan we've put a catheter in the portosystemic shunt and added contrast material and we can see the intrahepatic portosystemic shunt. Now here we're placing an intravascular stent in order to trap the coils within the portosystemic shunt. At this point we've placed a catheter inside the portosystemic shunt and we're simultaneously measuring pressures within the portosystemic shunt and within the vena cava. Now here we're starting to place coils through the stent and into the portosystemic shunt and these will gradually occlude the uh, 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 intrahepatic shunt um, until we get a gradient in blood pressure between the portosystemic shunt and the vena cava. Now we're targeting approximately uh, 8 millimeters of mercury differential between the portosystemic shunt or the portal vein and the vena cava. We continually place coils in the shunt until we get the adequate gradient between the two vessels. We're satisfied that we've achieved enough of a gradient, we can then remove all of the catheters from within the liver. Pre-op 3D volume rendering shows the portosystemic shunt in place, and then postoperatively we can see where we've placed the stent and the coils into the shunt.